I have tears once in a while. That's not because I'm weak. Let me tell you what, I was a combat training officer in the Vietnam era. I've never been accused of being a crybaby, but God has given me his heart towards America, towards our families, towards our churches. We're literally at a point where God has said it's after midnight. And he's held his hand out like this and he said, it's my will that none should perish but all should come to repentance. That's the only reason the judgment of God has not come upon this nation today because everything's in place. Earlier you heard about the forces of darkness and those, those powers and principalities in high places. Well, you'll see some of them. You'll see their names. Satan has a whole army of people. They work around the clock. They work 24 hours a day. They don't slumber or sleep. They have an objective. That's to bring everybody in this country into, into slavery. Satan once in, in UNESCO under the, under the year of the child, it was all children are our children. He wants all the children on earth. He wants everybody. He wants to destroy everybody. They have, many of them have no idea they're serving him. But Jesus said, you're for me or you're against me. We're either fighting for the forces of light and darkness and truth or believing a lie and, and we're doing nothing. And i got to share that right from the beginning because Jesus said a couple things. In Matthew 24, the very first thing when the disciples said, what shall be the signs of the end? He said, first of all, let no man deceive you. He said later on in that verse, a couple verses later, there will be many deceiving many. They will come deceiving many. There will be a little later on 24, he says, there will be much deception. We're living in a time of deception, people. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's exactly why tonight you're going to see everything on a screen instead of, of, of just hearing me talk up here. Because I'm not out to deceive. I'm out to share the truth that God has given me with the people and hopefully many of them will wake up and they'll be called to action, just like Gideon's army. Gideon's army, there were 32,000 people that, that wanted to be in the army. 22,000 went home because they had more important things to do, like paint their house or they were afraid. 9,700 got down to the riverside and they started drinking the water. All they were concerned about is physical gratification. 300 people, less than 1% literally lapped the water with one hand and had their hand on the sword with the other one. They were alert and they were aware and they were vigilant. That lukewarm verse in, in Revelations that Jesus said, I'd rather have you hot or cold rather than lukewarm, speaks of a fervency, a dedicated, a commitment is fervency. The lukewarmness is apathy. Lukewarmness is I don't really care. It's sort of like Hezekiah when the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah. He said, "You know what? The Babylonians are going to come. They're going to take you, and your, they're going to take your children away from you." And what Hezekiah say? He said, "If that's God's will, so be it." But then he said in his own heart, "As long as I live my life in peace and safety, who cares?" There's a lot of parents today saying they love their children with their mouth. But their actions are nowhere near close to their heart. Their actions are nowhere close to what they say. Jesus said to Jer to J in, through Jeremiah the prophet, he said, you, you people in Judah, your, your mouths are close to me, but your hearts are far from me. Many of us are, it's easy to say, I love you to our wives, but do we really love them? Are we willing to, to love our wives as Christ loved the church and give himself for the church? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I'd recommend we take the Word of God seriously. The last two years, I found out how straight and how narrow. I just told you 300 out of 32,000. That's less than 1%. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be coming of the Son of Man. How many people entered the ark when the door was closed? Eight. How many people are on the earth? Some people say 5 billion. Some people say 7. Some people say 14. That's not a very high percentage. When the children of Israel left Egypt, there were 2 to 4 million people. How many people entered the promised land? Two. When, Je when the disciples asked Jesus, he says, How, is, it hard to enter the are there is, is it hard to enter the kingdom of God? He says, you bet it is. Straight is that gate and narrow is that path, and few enter therein. He says, in fact, you have to strive to enter therein. Strive is the same word as agonize as he did in the garden when he sweat blood. Now what's happened over the years, the church has taken that gate and they've made it about this wide. 